You heard that local first is the new big trend in mobile apps, but you're not sure how your app can benefit? Let's talk about three reasons why adopting a local first paradigm enhances your app and makes both you and your users happier. By now, most developers know that local first architecture exists. If you don't know what it means, check out my first video on why it's the future, it should be linked below. But not every app would benefit from local first, so how do you know whether it's the right choice for your project? That's exactly what you will learn in this video. We will talk about three reasons why a developer would want to use a local first architecture to show you exactly when and for which type of app it makes sense. And I'll actually show you some of those apps that already use and benefit from it. Speaking of benefits, you can definitely benefit from using PowerSync, the sponsor of this video. Thanks again for helping me provide educational content around Local First to the whole community. If you don't know it yet, PowerSync is the sync layer between your Postgres database and, for example, the SQLite database in your app. PowerSync has a cloud-hosted version with a free plan, but they also have a self-hosted version that is free and the source code is available. It has basically all the features of the cloud version except the management dashboard. Also, if you want to see a real-world example, check out my PowerSync React Native implementation with Superbase backend video that I recently did. All links, as always, provided in the description, so check them out at powersync.com and don't forget to like and subscribe for more helpful videos and tutorials every week. But now, let's talk about the three reasons when local first makes the most sense. The first reason for a local first architecture is functionality. For local first to make sense for your app, your app might specifically require any of the following functionalities or you might simply want to provide users with better UX in general. For reference, I uh, see this talk from the local first conference about better UX is the unreasonable advantage of building local first. Is there functionality that local first provides best? For example, your app needs an instantly reactive UI. You can't get this with an HTTP call and waiting for some data. so doing the change whatever that might be locally is the fastest possible way to achieve instant ui updates same for showing initial data it can't get faster than having necessary data right in your app and since data is stored exactly where it's needed in the user's app or the browser the network is completely eliminated from the interaction path and with it network latency a great example is the overtone app by johannes schickling who's also hosting the local first fm podcast check out this demo isn't that smooth another popular app is linear uh, this is the well-loved app co-founded by thomas artman another example is multi-user collaboration this might sound strange at first but you need sync conflict resolution and resilience to poor networks for a good collaboration experience. All of that is an essential part of local first and therefore the best architecture decision. A great example for collaboration is Figma. The app uses a sync engine to persist a copy of the data locally and keep it in sync with other users. They even have a great technical write up here, uh, link below this video, go read through this if you want more information. The third group of apps is probably the most obvious you need full offline support. If you only rely on caching, you risk losing data here and there, um, not to mention the challenges of caching time and like managing app state. So more on the topic of developer experience later, but the majority of these apps are usually B2B use cases where an organization just cannot afford that an employee doesn't have access to the data. They need to do their job, especially jobs that take place in the field. One example of a PowerSync user is Portable PPB, an app used with some fancy hardware to analyze gold content in soil samples taken in remote areas. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Another PowerSync user is Workweek, whose app is used for employee time tracking. You always want to get that tracking right, no matter if you have a connection in that moment or not. And more popular examples include the next generation email client Superhuman, which is the most well-known consumer-facing app celebrated for its offline capabilities, enabled by a local-first architecture, or Obsidian, which I still feel overwhelmed by, so I stick to my simple note-taking app. So if your app fits into one of these categories and needs that type of functionality, 
local first is the architecture you should pick for your project. The second reason is economy. What the hell does the economy have to do with my app? Well, if you're not just a hobbyist and even sometimes in that case, your app produces costs, usually most ongoing expenses on the backend side. With local first, you can reduce that spending and increase revenue in three different ways. First, lower infrastructure cost. A big part of your monthly expenses are usually server or hosting costs, which you can dramatically reduce by shifting more of the load to the client. So you need fewer cloud resources in GCP or AWS. A great example comes from Linea, where Thomas Artman explained how much the infrastructure could cost in Europe. The example he gave was based on about a K concurrent users, which results in about 10K active users at peak time in Europe. Um, I did some calculations and we could run all of, you know, linear um, with effectively just two um, CPU cores um, in, in Europe, um, which costs you maybe 80 bucks a month. Um, so I'm, I'm telling you that, you know, the future is always already here. Um, you can save on server costs and those cloud costs by doing local first, because there's really um, not too much load that your service will have to bear. $80 a month for running Linear with 10K users in Europe? I don't know if you can cut down costs any better. Nice. So if your app is constantly pinging the server for data on every page load or navigation, you could reduce your expense big time by using local first. Second, you can lower team cost. Probably not the most obvious reason, but it's actually based on real world examples. First of all, Collapsing your app's stack means less effort is required and using local first results in a simpler stack with fewer components to build, test and maintain. For example, APIs, networking in general or error handling. And overall, fewer things can break in your app. Second, you're less dependent on your backend and uptime. Because local first apps keep working even when the backend is down, there's much less requirement for a whole team doing pager duty. And honestly, I could personally sleep much better with that knowledge. And all these team reasons might sound like only big teams benefit, but even on the like indie developer side, you get the benefits of basically starting backend less. Or you, you treat your backend as a dump data store and focus all the development on the client. Meaning we as front end focused engineers can ship complete products a lot quicker. A great example for that is the Octologs app, which is like a scuba diving log app because local first and specifically using a pre-built sync engine reduces complexity and therefore the team needed to implement and maintain an app more developers can bring their app to the market. There are so many emerging local first apps built by indie developers and a few of them I know and sometimes even <laughs> helped consult include um, the just mentioned Octolox, which uses PowerSync. We got Jagdcode, which is like a German license uh, education app. There's Impact Diary, which is for diary keeping. Then we got Actual Budget, which is for budget tracking. Bengal, which is like a mode taking application. Or Girda, which is also for budget tracking. Third, you can increase revenue. Besides cutting costs, Local First can also increase revenue. How? The emerging model that Local First enables looks like this. Allow users to use the app for free without having to share their email and thereby lowering the barrier for new users. Only require them to sign up if they want sync and offer that as a paid service. So you broaden your pool of total users and already have a premium functionality, which is the sync, to offer in exchange for a subscription. Especially more indie consumer focused apps seem to be following this approach. A great example would be the successful Habit Kipped application, which is actually built with Flutter, but that's a different story. More great examples of apps following this approach include Tweak, which is like a calendar, Gnocchi or Gnocchi, sorry to all Italians, which is like grocery list tracking. And then we got Triptych, which is for trip packing planning. And finally, Excalidraw, which I've used a couple of times in my streams, which is like a collaborative whiteboard drawing stuff. This means you can initially build your app experience to be local only with no sync and then offer data sync as a paid feature. So it's one of the rare cases where you can actually map developer hours right to uh, or against additional revenue. Reason three is the developer experience. Not all reasons for local first can be mapped exactly to one specific 
thing or category, but a better overall developer experience is usually the result of adopting local first and therefore affects like many subsequent categories. You want some examples? Here we go. One high level benefit that comes to mind is the easier stack of your app. To make this point visual, let's take a look at two slides from the local first conf talk of Anselm Eikhoff. Uh, talk was called like every app secretly <laughs> wants to be local first. He shared a great slide. Just look at all these items, define data model, choose database, deploy, backend, permission, API, whatnot, but you can cross out so many items from this list by going local first, which makes building your app a magnitude easier. Another benefit can be found in state management, which is traditionally challenging and a pain in the backside sometimes. With local first, you are basically using the local database to manage state, which is also described in detail in this article on the PowerSwing blog uh, called Local First State Management with SQLite. You can perform all actions locally and through hooks like use query or with PowerSync use PowerSync watch query, you can easily update your views, which makes other massive state management solutions like Redux completely unnecessary. A better DX can also be found in the usage of a sync engine in general. In his talk about the benefits, again, Thomas Artman shared some insights they discovered at Linear and why they will never go back to a non-local first approach. Some of the biggest gains were made in terms of developer productivity. You basically don't need to write networking code. That was a great example of like doing the usual fetch call and like following up with the error handling and state management or whatnot and compare that just to like mapping against local data. So much better. There's also no need for most error handling code because the sync engine would prevent any write or update errors. And you can prototype without any backend, which basically means you can create features without considering the backend. Your local change is no different from a remote change because you work on the local SQLite database, which is then synced to your remote database. And beyond all of that, you might simply prefer the developer experience of local first and enjoy writing code more especially after setting it up and seeing it in action with a sync engine like PowerSync, there's usually no going back as you entered the matrix of what's possible today. All right, to recap, there are three main reasons to consider local first for your app. First, functionality, which comes down to reactive UIs, user collaboration and offline support. Second, economy, you can save money and add additional revenue streams. Third, DX, you write less code that's even safer and easier to work with. Big apps like Linear, Figma or Superhuman are great examples of adopting a local first architecture and therefore improving the quality of the app for the users. And an increasing number of indie apps like HabitKit, uh, Yacht Coach or Octolux embrace local first as a way to ship apps faster with additional revenue streams almost built in. All of this while also reducing cost for teams and infrastructure and complexity of of the whole system. So it's almost a win-win-win scenario if your app falls into one of these categories or benefits from one of the reasons we talked about. One of the easiest ways to test the waters is definitely by using today's sponsor, PowerSync. Thanks again for making this and other videos happen. Check them out at powersync.com, get started for free and definitely tell them Simon told you about it. Now, is your app already using local first? If not, why not? Let me know in the comments and I'm happy to answer any further questions you might have about building local first apps. Or of course, do a future app review episode especially focused on your local first apps. Also, if you now want to get your hands dirty, I've pinned a video up here on using PowerSync with Superbase and React Native. Check it out and I'll catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.